Hello, my name is Carl Dannenberger, and the topic of this presentation is the evolution of the golf ball. Much of golf's growth through the ages has been due in no small part to the improvements in the ball. The game of golf that originated in Holland around 1296 was played with a wooden ball. The wooden ball shown here is a replica of a beechwood ball excavated in Amsterdam around 1590. The original wood balls weighed around 3 ounces and were used into the early 17th century. The feathery ball appears to be originally developed by the Dutch. The feathery was a leather ball stuffed with feathers. One of the first pictures of what appears to be a feathery ball is in this oil painting showing a young boy at probably the age of seven in the year 1612 with a stitched leather ball at his feet as he is holding a golf club. The feathery ball had an approximate diameter of 1.6 inches and weighed three quarters of an ounce. Records show that the first reported feathery in Scotland occurred around 1743. The ball was made from tan leather with the feathers, which were predominantly from the breast of a goose, boiled to make them limp. The leather was soaked in warm water prior to adding the feathers. The feathers were pushed in using a rod called a brogue. The ball dried out on completion, and with the leather shrinking and the feathers expanding, the dual pressure resulted in a hard ball. How many feathers? A common tale is a top hat full of feathers, but I think this is a myth. The actual number was how many a person could stuff or force into that leather ball. Only three to four featheries could be made in a day, thus the price was high. A feathery could cost two to five shillings or approximately ten to twenty U.S. dollars per ball. The feathery played well in dry weather, provided it was not mishit, but once it got wet, the ball would degrade quickly. In good conditions, the ball could be struck 150 to 200 yards. It is reported the longest drive hit with a feathery was 360 yards in 1911. The gutta-percha ball was probably the most important development in the history of golf. It was basically a rubber ball. Gutta-percha is a hard substance that was discovered in Malaya in 1843, which could be softened by soaking in water. It is believed that a Dr. R. Patterson of St. Andrews received an Indian Hindu statue packed with chunks of gutta percha. He eventually made the packing material into a golf ball, painted it white, and played it in St. Andrews around 1845. In 1846, the ball was introduced. The advantage of the gutta percha was its cost, about half that of a feathery, and generally lasted much longer. The drawback was the paint did not stick to it, so most of the balls were black or brown, making them hard to find. The gutty ball, or gutty, was the first composite ball, which means it was made of distinct parts or elements. Captain Duncan Stewart of St. Andrews took out the first patent specifically for a golf ball. He made a composite ball combining gutta percha, ground cork, metal filings, and a solvent. The following year, William Curie of the Caledonian Rubber Works took out a patent on a composite ball which he molded and vulcanized. To indent the surface of the ball, the mold was lined with canvas which adhered to the surface of the ball and then was removed. This was the famous eclipse ball. A replica of the ball is shown here. It was painted so the ball would be easier to find. The Hasco ball arrived in 1898. It was a core wound rubber ball that made the game of golf much easier. Matter of fact, it was commonly associated or criticized with making golf courses obsolete because it went so far. Colburn Haskell got involved with bicycle manufacturing and through a relationship with Bertram Work of B.F. Goodrich in Akron created the golf ball. The idea was winding an elastic thread around a core and covering it with the gutta-percha cover. 
From that, John Gameter invented the first automatic golf winding machine in 1900. The first Haskell balls were expensive and did not fly well, just like the gutta percha balls because they were too smooth. Once a bramble pattern was added, the distance gain resulted in golf courses having to be lengthened. Improvements in the Haskell ball spawned a host of dicta from the RNA and USGA. In 1920, for the first time, the size of the golf ball was set. Both organizations agreed that the ball should weigh no more than 1.62 ounces and have a diameter of not less than 1.62 inches. However, in 1931, the USGA, for whatever reason, turned its back on the collective agreement and introduced the big ball, a ball having a minimum size of 1.68 inches and a maximum weight of 1.55 ounces. A year later, they raised the weight stipulation to 1.62 ounces. Under pressure from the Professional Golf Association in Great Britain, the RNA in 1968 announced that the bigger ball would be used in the RNA tournaments, and in 1988, the smaller ball was outlawed. This photo shows the larger American ball, 1.68 inches in diameter, and the smaller British ball, the Dunlap, which was 1.62 inches in diameter. The modern golf ball is a direct descendant of the Haskell. A popular ball that was played and made until the mid-1990s was the wound or ballata ball. It was considered a great ball because of its soft feel. It was comprised of a liquid core with rubber bands wrapped around it and a cover that was normally ballata or some other type of cover material. With the ballata ball, the cover could be easily cut with a missed shot. So generally only accomplished golfers played the ball. Although there had always been one or two piece balls since the Haskell, in the mid-1990s, with the release of the Titleist Pro V1 and similar types of balls, the wound ball became obsolete. The Pro V1 type balls outperformed the Bellata balls in distance, feel, and control. It is interesting how history repeats itself. With the release of the Pro V1 and improvements in ball and club technology, golf courses have been, to many, too short or obsolete. Similar to the cries when the gutter Bircha ball and then especially when the Haskell hit the market. The modern golf balls are often referred to their construction, like two-piece, three-piece, or four-piece. We have briefly mentioned brambling or markings on a golf ball that help the ball fly better. Dimples played an important role in the aerodynamics of a golf ball. The dimpled pattern on the golf ball creates aerodynamic lift, which allows the ball to remain in the air longer. Dimple design has changed significantly over the years, from random patterns to ordered rows, to more complicated designs along with different depths, shapes, sizes, distribution pattern, and numbers of dimples. For instance, the number of dimples varies from 300 to 500 dimples per ball, with most golf balls ranging between 350 and 450 dimples. By scientifically experimenting with dimple characteristics, in the construction of a particular golf balls, manufacturers can optimize the resulting trajectory for both distance and control. In addition, as the air travels around the ball, the dimpling of the golf ball creates a smaller wake, disturbing air behind the ball, and thus much less aerodynamic drag than a golf ball with a smooth surface. In fact, a dimple golf ball has about one half the drag as a smooth one. Thus, a golf ball that is well-designed dimples will travel over twice as far as a smooth surface golf ball. The advances in science and technology regarding golf ball evolution has been staggering, especially over the last 20 years. Golf balls last longer, perform better, and make the game more enjoyable. With these advances comes challenges to the game. Do these new golf balls make golf courses too short or obsolete.